Jack, the unblooming's blossoms look beautiful. My goodness! You there, young man! You're feeling quite nervous, aren't you? Is it that obvious? Why, yes! But you really should try to relax a little. It's the day of your entrance ceremony, after all. No matter what terrible future awaits you, face it with a smile. Good advice. Thank you. <laughs> a terrible future awaits me. That's probably just some joke they tell to scare all the first-year students. Although, there's a decent chance that we're being serious. After all, the school is far from ordinary. Oh. That flower really freaked me out. And what did she mean by that? I don't want a terrible future. <laughs> I wouldn't put any stock in what the pride plants say. Magic flora like them absorb magic particles from the ground, which end up affecting their personalities. People say the ones around here are particularly nasty. Ah, I see. Truth be told, I don't know terribly much about plants, but I really love magical fauna. Oh, so what's your favorite? I can't pick just one. I like the little ones, the big ones, and even the super what? slimy ones. Slimy ones? The heck are those? Hey, you there! <laughs> the guy reading? Pay attention uh -oh. to where you're walking. See that? You were about to step on the madam stem there. You're gonna get an earful from her and it'll be your own fault. Mm, how rude! <laughs> Who cares about that? Just mind your own business. Oh, what's this? Seems someone doesn't think they need to wear their uniform. Hey, that girl over there, is she one of those samurai? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Never seen a samurai before. I couldn't help but stop and stare. There was something special about her. Was it her unique clothes that made her stand out? Or maybe... It was this strange feeling deep in my chest. An overwhelming sense of deja vu. What some people might call... destiny. Bunch of magic war and now magical beasts? What kind of dragon is that? Do you know what it is? Oh, sure. That one there is a Favner. You know your stuff. I wouldn't say that. I suppose I just happened to read a lot. You alright? I thought you said you liked magical fauna. Yes, I'm fine. This parade. Look there. They're making that troll walk in the parade as if it were any other beast it shouldn't be treated like that it's not right huh you're getting upset over some troll they don't speak our language and the wild ones even attack people it makes sense to train them to serve our needs but they only attack humans who invade their territory they're actually kind and peace-loving creatures back in the country they come every year to kindly mess up our fields seems like they're invading us and who exactly do you think own the land before the humans hey, moved in both of you cut it out hmm. I can't focus with the racket. Oh, I'm sorry uh, about that. My bad, dude. Don't let it happen again. I see, so that's a griffin. The wings look different from the picture. <sighs> it's a complex situation, so let's talk about it later. Maybe uh, after we introduce ourselves. Right, I don't even know your names. Uh, I guess I'll go first. Yes. <laughs> What are you doing? Stop! Did you think my feet are moving on their own? Magic! What's going on? I'm not sure. That girl ran off. Oh no, this is bad! Ah! That troll's heading straight for her! <laughs> Just mind your own business! Hang it! What the heck are they doing? Is this part of it? Like some kind of play? Think you can stand up? My legs are numb. I can't. 
I see. Then stay right where you are, and I'll take care of everything. Is that samurai gonna fight the troll all on her own? She's gonna get herself killed! Come on, we have to try to... Just... It didn't even spare us a second glance. Let's work together. Ugh, fine. Wait, you saw what happened. Our spells aren't strong enough. The troll will just shrug them off again. So you want us to watch her die? Of course not. Please tell me you guys can use wind magic. I can, but only a little bit. Good enough. Gather all the winds you can, and when I give you the signal, send it to that spot right there! I don't get it. What did you expect to accomplish with There's no time! If you want to save her life, then do as I say! Very well. I'll go along with your plan. We don't have a choice. Sure, I'll let a hand. No! No matter what happens, keep the spell up! Tibia! That's Dragon Voice! It was merely an imitation of a dragon's roar, but it's close enough to the real thing. That's exactly the distraction we need. All right. It's time. Run away! Oh. Color. One moment. I'll carry you out of here as soon as I can feel my hands again. Sure. Thank you for the assistance. Your magic really came in handy. The distraction gave me the perfect opening to strike. It was amazing. That roar was so intense and realistic. I swear I was about to wet myself right then and there, which would have been super embarrassing. <laughs> We got separated from the others. What's up with that? Well, I would have preferred to be separated from you, too. <laughs> You're joking, right? So you didn't have a plan in mind when you stepped up in front of that troll? A plan? <laughs> yeah, that would have been pretty helpful, huh? Now that I think about it a little more, my katana doesn't even have a cutting edge. I was in way over my head back there. That was quite reckless of you. If our spell didn't work, there's a good chance you could have been killed. I suppose you're right about... I'd say I'm off to an auspicious start. I can't follow her logic at all. But I know what I saw back there. Innocent color. Named for the crystal-like hair that allows magic particles to easily flow. It also signifies powerful mana circulation within the body. That means she has the potential to become one dominant mage. Can I have your attention, please? <sighs> Settle down. The headmistress is going to speak to you now. I am Headmistress Esmeralda. Firstly, I would like to apologize for the parade incident. The troll that went on a rampage has been recaptured and locked away. Additionally, any injured students have been treated. I've got goosebumps just looking at the Headmistress. She's an incredibly strong mage, there's no doubt about it! Welcome to Kimberly Magic Academy. This is a house of learning where you will spend the next seven years mastering magic. We prioritize two tenets, freedom and results. To put it simply, life, death, they rest in your hands. Be aware that was no mere metaphor. Roughly 80% of students graduate from Kimberly and Tad when they lose control of their magic. Or go missing after what they've summoned drags them to whence they came. Some are even put to death after they lose their minds and engage in mass murder. In the world of magic, those who fall during their pursuit of knowledge have been consumed by the spell. But that is what it means to learn magic. This philosophy is how we made it to where we are today by climbing over the corpses of those who failed. As a final reminder, 
Your life and death are in your own hands. If you do die, make sure it's not in vain. As they say, when a tiger dies, it at least leaves behind its pelt. You must become tigers, otherwise there will be nothing left of you. Moving on. If anyone has questions or concerns, I'll take this opportunity to address them now. Excuse me? May I say something? But of course. What is it? Whenever my head hurts, I rub my temples in a circular motion like this, and I start feeling better right away! <gasps> what exactly are you trying to say? Oh, it was just a piece of advice. You seem like you're in pain for some reason. If there's nothing else, I'll continue the ceremony. Are you stupid or something? Nay, I'm telling you, it really does work! Confirmed. You are stupid! <laughs> Don't believe me? Try it for yourself, then! Anyway, if there are no questions, we will now begin this year's welcome banquet. Feel free to eat and I'll kindly take your seats. Take our seats? Uh... Uh... <laughs> So many fresh faces. Welcome to Kimberly. This is scary. Don't worry about all that doom and gloom stuff. It's not that bad. It's our job as older students to lead the way and make things safer for you. Come on, drink up. The white grape juice here is so good it should be illegal. We've been looking for you, dudes. Let go hey. of me. Hey there, long time no see. So we managed to meet up again. The only person missing is the girl they took to the nurse's office. <laughs> Speaking of, she's arrived. <laughs> Looks like everybody's here now. In that case, this is the perfect opportunity for us to introduce ourselves. I suppose I could start us off. Nice to meet you all. I'm Michelle McFarland. I'm actually the eldest daughter of the McFarland fam. Been since ancient times. Anyway, you can call me Shella. I freaking knew it. I had a feeling you were a McFarland girl. By the way, I've always wondered. Does your family have a curse on it that makes everyone grow those curly ringlets? Your rude question aside, this hairstyle is a symbol of my proud heritage. In fact, it's considered polite to think from its sheer beauty when you see it for the first time. <laughs> All right, why don't we go clockwise? Huh? Me? Okay, then. Um, my name is Katie Alto. I'm an exchange student from Farmland. <laughs> it's a country to the north. My interests include magical fauna. Actually, I like regular animals, too. And I wanted to say... Thank you for saving me earlier, everybody. Don't mention it. We're glad you're okay. So why'd you run off like that? Don't tell me you wanted to pet the beasts. Um, I think it was just a prank or something. We can get to the bottom of that situation later. For now, let's enjoy the banquet. You're up next, right? Hey, everyone. My name's Guy Greenwood, and I come from a pretty long line of magical farmers. When it comes to plant knowledge, I'm definitely number one. If you ever want some yummy vegetables, you can count on me. Sounds tasty. I'm going to take you up on that offer. Of course. I'll send you a whole bunch. You're up next. Hey. Fine. My name is Pete Reston. I am the first person in my whole family to be magical. There's no history to speak of. I'm done now. Oh, wow. So you're enrolled. In you can keep your flattery to yourself. I didn't come to school to make friends. What are you staring at? Sorry. I just wanted to see what you were reading there. That's a book by Alfred Werner, isn't it? An introduction to magic for non-magicals. <gasps> You recognize it? It's fantastic. I've read it a bunch of times. I really love the little stories the author put in between each chapter. Yeah, me too. Those are my favorite. I especially liked the one after chapter three where he has that conversation with the magical judge. Uh... <laughs> We're still introducing ourselves, aren't we? So what are you waiting for? Sure thing. My name is Oliver Horn. My grandpa was my family's first magical. Right now, I'm living with some relatives of mine. I've got an older brother and a sister. Well, they're my cousins, actually. They're students here, and they've told me all sorts of things. I was surprised when you came up with that dragon voice trick. I've never seen anyone use a flute spell like that, let alone a brand new student. I like customizing spells and thinking of new ways to use them. I'm just glad everything worked out. And now our final introduction. Very well. Hello there. My family hails from Toriku Asin, Yamatsukini. You may address me as Hibia Nanao. You said you came from Yamatsu, right? It was a strange twist of fate that brought me here. I was fighting in a war back home and found myself staring down certain death. Luckily, a passing mage saved me at the Farlin. 
Afterwards, he invited me to come here. Hmm. Did I hear you right? He said his name was McFarlane? Indeed! You two both share the same surname, don't you? Now that I think about it, your hairstyle is similar. If I had to guess, that was probably my father. He's actually a part-time lecturer here at Kimberly. Though I didn't know he went all the way to Asia to scout out new students. But your family's not magical. You must have taken the test. The same one I had to take to earn my spot here at school. Sorry, but I didn't have to take any kind of knowledge test. Each of Kimberly's teachers has the power to give a special recommendation to one student. Must be nice to get in like that. Now that we know each other, I hope we all become good friends. Boy, this food looks good. Totally! I can't wait to eat this tasty food! Uh, c come on guys, let's drink up! I can feel my tummy rumbling! Hooray! So which one of these dishes is mine? Hold on, Nanel! That roast beef is supposed to serve six people! Really? Surely you're pulling my leg! I can eat this entire thing by myself! I don't know how things are done in your home country, but that's not how we eat our meals here! Just hold on for a sec. I'm gonna make you a plate, alright? I wanna help Nana too! I'll teach you everything I know about proper table manners. <gasps> the food just keeps coming! This is what being a princess is like! That looks like a tail. You're in trouble now! You got two princesses to wait on! <laughs> you know what? Why don't you make it three? When did I become everybody's servant? How bothersome! Seems a mouthful of food doesn't quiet you down at all. <sighs> You've only got meat on your plate. You should eat some veggies, otherwise you could get sick. What are you, my mom? I hate that person! <laughs> if somebody hasn't opened their eyes to the wonders of vegetables, you'll be a convert soon enough. Get away from me, you freak! It's great! May I get second? I suppose clock knocks need their fun, too. I'm guessing it's around five o'clock. Good morning, Pete. Hope you're feeling less grumpy. I'm sharing a room with you? I don't have a choice, do I? Just keep it down while I'm trying to read. It's the first day of classes. You wouldn't want to catch a cold. So thick here. You're up early. Is there something bothering you? I wanted to take a look around the school grounds while it was still quiet. Who are you? You can relax. I'm a covert operative sent by Gwyn. I was tasked with watching over you until you got settled in. So brother sent a babysitter. A covert operative seems like overkill. He is merely worried about your well-being. You're telling me. He's always been overly protective. You'll be following me for a while, then? What should I call you? Doesn't matter. Yeah, that's not helpful at all. Surely you can tell me your name. All right. I am Teresa Karst. Very nice to meet you, Miss Karst. I assume that I'll get to see your face one of these days? I'll reveal myself if the situation necessitates it. Anyway, if you ever need my help, you can simply call for me. <laughs> So clear and refreshing. <gasps> oh, hello, Oliver. Good morning. Looks like you're also an early morning person, huh? Cobell! What in the world do you think you're doing? You shouldn't be bathing out here. It may be early, but this place can be seen from the men's dorms. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing isn't shameful, so why would I hide? Well, it's not something you should be doing in public. I think there's a misunderstanding here. I'm not bathing. I am undergoing a purification ritual to cleanse myself of the blood I spilled in war. Is that where you got those scars? Uh, yes. These are the injuries I received in battle. I'm sorry if they're not pleasant to look at. Oh, no. <laughs> This is your chance, okay? Uh, um, anyway... Uh, it's better if you finish purifying yourself as quickly as possible. Don't worry, I'm done now. Oh no, what do I do? I forgot. 
about to bring something to dry myself. You, sis. But are you sure? Just do it. Uh, all right, then. I'll accept your kindness. It seems I owe you yet again, Oliver. Thank you. Hebe is not now. A strange and innocent girl who I met on my first day at Kimberly Magic Academy. Though she purified herself, which nothing could wash away. Did you sleep okay? Yeah, I slept really well, actually. Ah, here they are! Oh, hey, good morning. It's good to see you. Did you guys both sleep okay? Hmm? I guess so. Yeah, fortunately. Uh, sorry, I'm so late. Somehow I woke up just in time. How come no one told me we have clock knocks in the dorms? There are clock knocks here? I didn't see any sign of them in my room. And I was up really early, though. Yes, indeed. My body always naturally wakes up around 6 in the morning. Hey, and now, you're in uniform today. I am. I think. Do I look the part of a real mage now? Yeah, definitely. Looking good. Huh. By the way, uh, is your rope kind of damp, or am I just crazy? <laughs> you're definitely crazy. Enough chit-chat. Let's go and eat breakfast already. We don't have time to stand around all day. We have classes to get to! Yeah, okay, Mom. Get your hand off of me! <laughs> I totally understand your excitement, though. I also feel that way. We'll finally attend a magic lesson! All right, students. Welcome to Sword Arts class. Before we break out any blades, though, let's start with a little refresher. Can any of you tell me the definition of the term Sword Arts? Well then, anyone? Excuse me? I know it, sir. Front row. Begin by telling me your name. Yes, sir. Pete Preston, sir. First day and he's already the teacher's pet. I heard from someone that he's an ordinary. Man, the guy looks like a nerd, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sword arts. Specific combat techniques performed with the use of an athame. The use of athames as a complement to white wands has been a standard practice for over 400 years. This tradition originated when a famous mage named Wilf Batterwell lost a duel to a non-magical. From that day forward, mages have carried out where there's no time for a spell. You can use the blade itself, or employ incantationless magic to distract or disorient an enemy, making it extremely versatile. Hmm. The sort of range where you're able to take one step and cut down your enemy is called the one step, one spell distance. It's within this tiny world that you fight with both your blade and your magic. That's where you master the art. I always begin the first class by having two people who already know how to duel face each other. So, are there any volunteers? Huh? Sir, it would be an honor to fight. Uh, uh, Nanao? You must be the famous Nanao Hibia. I do appreciate the enthusiasm. However, your abilities may not be... Mr. Garland, I volunteer. My name's Richard Andrews. I heard this girl defeated a troll with nothing but a sword. Seems like the perfect opportunity for her to show us how they fight in Asia. <laughs> I really don't like that guy. So he plans to show off by defeating them now, exploiting our lack of experience. Well, as long as each of you agree to it. I'm Oliver Horn, and I volunteer to duel Nanao. Listen, you! I asked first. Back off or I'll have to- You need to back off. I defeated the troll with her, so I should be the one to fight her. <laughs> now I get it during the troll attack. Judging by your attitude, you seem really proud of the fact that you fought. But it wasn't smart. You should have let an upperclassman or teacher handle it. All logic, no heart. Guess we all know exactly what choice you'd make if a classmate were about to die, huh? <laughs> you little- Unless you're afraid of losing to me, I'll challenge you instead. Miss McFarlane. If you manage to win against me, that's much more impressive. However, Maybe you're afraid of losing. No way I'm afraid! Alright, 
Do they know each other or something? Either way, I owe you one, Shala. <laughs> so, duel number one, Mr. Horn versus Miss Hebia. And afterward, we'll have an additional duel between Mr. Andrews and Miss McFarlane. To the center, first pair. Bow and then draw. Securus. For your protection, an anti-lethality spell. Now you can't enter one another. Ah, oh, it really works. An important note, this is the only permitted manner of combat between students. Rule breakers face a harsh punishment. No time limit. The duel will end when one of you inflicts a mortal blow to the head or chest of the other. Now then, get ready! Good luck. Let's try our best. Good. I won't use any. It wouldn't be a fair fight. I'll give it a minute, then quit. But that's not right. Begin! I won't allow myself to throw the duel! I can't hold her back! Grave soil! Got her! What? I don't block! I did to black! No! No doubt about it. She's killed people with that sword. And I bet my life that it's more than a few. How many lives has that blade taken? Right here. It was right here. Don't cry. I wish I could stop her from crying with everything I have, right in this moment, without holding anything back. I'm grateful. Hmm. We'll continue the duel, until one of us dies! Stop fighting! Swords down, enough! I never told you to kill each other. I'm sure that it wasn't on purpose, but the two of you, you broke the anti-lethality spell. What? What was I just about to do? Please, put your swords in their sheaths and take a rest. Uh. Alright, Richard. Honestly, now, you saw her skills with a sword. Could you have kept up? <laughs> Master Garland? Hmm? I think that we've seen enough fighting for today. Could I retract my earlier offer? If both of you agree. I also withdraw. Then, let's return to the lesson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver! I just have to say, that fight was amazing! I've never even come close to a duel as fulfilling as that one. I guess I have a regret, though. I wish we were able to finish that fight. I'd love to finally see what lies beyond that moment. I can't think of anything I want more. Don't you want that too? So please, perhaps me you'll duel me again someday. Until we reach the end this time, and without a protective spell. No way! <sighs> I don't want to fight again, okay? Okay, but why? I don't need a reason. I told you I'm not interested, alright? I don't want to end up killing you. And I don't want you to end up killing me. I don't understand. There's so much to learn. It's a lot more than I thought. Spellology class was harder than you expected, huh? I didn't expect a rant. I mean, we'd only just left sword arts class, you know? For goodness sake, I hate seeing all those unsightly athames. I absolutely want to emphasize this. A good mage only needs a white wand. If there's one thing to learn, it's this. If you call your... You sure had a lot of familiars. Um. 
classes. This day's been full of surprises, huh? I wonder what'll happen in her afternoon classes. Oh, Macho Bio is next, right? I've been looking forward to that class all day. Any of you animal loving? Oh, they're so cute types. This is my class, so throw that shit away. <laughs> Here we treat magical creatures as the resources they are. In this course, you'll learn the best ways to exploit them. And for today's assignment... <sighs> they're so cute! Magic silkworms. As long as you continue to feed them magic, they'll keep making cocoons indefinitely. Won't they turn into moths, though? Just make sure you rip the cocoon off first. That is, assuming that you fed the worms the right amount of magic. However, if you give them too much to eat... The black cocoon? Keep your distance. It'll come out any minute. <laughs> too much magic transforms it into a monster. Blame us. That being said, I expect you to make cocoons for today's assignment. You need five cocoons to pass. You'll get ten worms in total. If you make a mess, you right then. Begin! Oh, your mind's already black! Hurry, burn it, you moron! Should I eat it? Shut up and focus! I'm shocked at how easy today's assignment is. One failure. Blame us. Damn, it's really that easy for you? Sorry. If we only need five cocoons, I guess I did pretty well. Oliver, it looks like you're done already, too. Maybe you could lend a hand to Katie or Pete? I'll go and try and help Nanelle. Huh? You seemed uncomfortable, I thought. Maybe something happened? Yeah. Thanks, Shella. Mm -hmm. What about me? Go get your five failures out of the way first. <laughs> After you've practiced a bit, I'll come over and help you. She can already tell I'm a klutz. Damn it! <laughs> I just barely passed. Uh, Flama! Come on! I can only make four of them! Oh, this year's freshmen are unusually good. Zero monster attacks so far. You're still on your fifth worm? The only thing you have to do is just relax. Please, I need quiet. Nanel mm -hmm. just finished hers up. Almost all were failures, though. And hers? She's on her ninth and nearly finished, but... It sounds like she's doing great. She's already passed. She doesn't have to be so careful. Well, she has a different goal than we do. <gasps> it's not about the grade for her. She wants to save the lives of as many living things as she can. You see? <gasps> You're okay. You'll be okay. Black! Hurry, burn it! <laughs> Quickly! I can't! Maybe if I rip off the cocoon... Oh. <laughs> oh. You two lose points for helping her when I said not to. I'm sorry. You left class to come with me. Now you're missing the lesson, too. Don't worry. Honestly, I didn't want to be there either. We always had animals all throughout my childhood. Normal pets, but magic ones too. Also, some demi-humans. Oh yeah? That's the reason I act this way. If I see a demi-human or animal in pain, it just feels like... Like I'm the one hurt. Rationally, I know that we do these things to advance our society. But still, they just only see animals as resources. They see them as things that are just meant to be used. But I don't think I'll ever see them that way. Even if it's normal, I refuse to accept it. I can understand your feelings. I mean, it sounds like the place you grew up in was heavenly. <gasps> Sadly, you're just not in heaven anymore. You've already experienced the cruelty here. That's why. You can't remain an angel forever. But despite that, even if the cruelty in this world doesn't change you, I actually think that's a noble thing. Not even an angel could stay as kind as you. Uh, so what I'm saying is, you've barely begun to scratch the surface here at Kimberly. Don't lose hope just yet. You'll find a path that's true to who you are. 
And also... <laughs> that hurt. If it wasn't obvious, you're never alone. I know. Thanks, everyone. Seems like you didn't... Sarcasm? No, not at all. You should choose your friends more carefully, though. Someone who can't even kill a silkworm is unlikely to survive in a place like Kimberly. I can decide that for myself, thanks. I apologize. Did you need something? Yes. I wanted to let you know that I'm headed to Master Gwyn's workshop, which means that I'll be leaving your side for a while. All right, then. Tell my brother I said hello. I will. <sighs> Yummy, huh? I'm so stuffed. Aww. You feeling okay now? Yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. Although, now you're looking kind of down. <sighs> I'm okay. Are you homesick? I'm here if you ever want to talk. I'll help you however I can. Mm, thanks, Katie. Huh? Okay, then. I guess I have to leave now. Mm, but why? I lost my book. I think it's in the spellology room. I'm gonna go look for it. <sighs> Hmm? Things aren't always so easy to find here at Kimberly, you know. We'll come along. You may not have forgotten it at all. The mischievous fairy might have taken it. But no matter, the rest of you can wait here. All right, let's get going. Jeez, you don't have to drag me! Just hurry up. Man, they seem really tense, huh? It's real or not, but they say that the school building sits on top of a giant labyrinth. And at nighttime, the labyrinth allegedly begins to encroach upon the building. It's still here! See? And you all said it would be hard to find. You guys were pulling my leg, huh? All right. It's getting late. Let's head back. Yeah. This place can be dangerous after dark, and I don't think we're ready for it yet. Hey, I said you don't have to drag me! Uh, a dead end! <laughs> huh? ah! The labyrinth's already this far? The sun just set! What do we do? It's okay. New students get stranded all the time here at Kimberly. Teachers and upperclassmen always patrol the school grounds at night. You're relying on me? How cute. <gasps> Pete, wait! Huh? Look at all the lost sheep. One, two, three. Three little cuties. I could just eat you up. <clears throat> Well, good evening there. Uh, You're an upperclassman, right? Uh-huh. I'm Ophelia Salvadori. I'm a fourth year. <gasps> Salvadori! Uh, uh, Dolor. Uh, I am polite. I'm Oliver Horn, a first year. I know who you are already. Your reputation precedes you. Ah, where do you hear about me? I read a paper you wrote. A study of the rapid development that results from the interbreeding of a kraken and a scylla. I really enjoyed it. It actually gave me the shivers. Oh, you read my paper, huh? You must know my research well. No! Stay away! Huh? It really doesn't affect you? You're tougher than you look. Hey, no need to get mad at me. It's not on purpose. Honestly, it's just the way my body works. When I breathe, particles spread through the air, so... How about you come a little closer? I'll pass, thanks. Oh. Let's go. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> that smell. It's the stench of death. Don't be in such a hurry. <laughs> She's quite the lonely woman, you know. Why not spend some more time together? I'm Cyrus Rivermore, fifth year here, and if you prefer it, I can look after you instead. Such naughty children running away in the middle of discipline, too. <laughs> you have to calm down. We're fine. Trust me. Don't move. He's right. If you draw your weapon, we're done for. They're just waiting for an excuse to attack us. Still desecrating every corpse you come across, Rivermore? How long has it been since we last saw each other? You flatter me. 
Though if you ask me, the things you do to fulfill your carnal urges are the true desecration. Disgusting! Right, Sakiba Salvadori? It seems you have a death wish. You know what happens to anybody who calls me that. Bring it on! As I recall the last time you and I fought, I ripped half your insides out. Congregator! <laughs> Summoning magic? Not quite. She's giving birth to that thing. What kind of magic is that? Now's our chance. Let's go! You kids have spirit, I'll give you that. But that won't help you here. Indeed. This place is filled with death. I can feel it. No, no. Congregonta, te fermotio! I'll cover your escape from here. If you wish to leave, now's your chance. After I enter the battlefield, it will become a chaotic free-for-all. That will be your cue. Neither of them will be able to come after you. Even a serpent can't keep it at bay, huh? Well, what foul seed will you put into that disgusting womb of yours next? You're one to talk. Tell me, what kind of corpse did you pilfer that enormous spine from, scavenger? This seems like an appropriate resting place. That's all. It's as simple as that. What do you mean? You three should leave now. <clears throat> That's all? No way! enough I thought I was quite clear about the rules for recruiting the new students but it seems you two were still confused purgatory I see you still incinerate first and ask questions later I also told you not to call me by that name around the new students you can relax now I won't let any harm befall you I hereby swear so on my name student body president Alvin Godfrey you heard the man Carlos. My name's Carlos Whitrow. I'm a fifth-year prefect, so come to me if you ever need help. Nice to meet you, my adorable little kitties. Mwah. We'll decide your punishments later. For now, you are to head back into the depths of the labyrinth. <laughs> Guess you lucked out today, succubus. I was going to say the same to you. You'd better wash those disgusting guts of yours before you run into me again. You've had one hell of a welcome. Those two almost never come this far up in the labyrinth. Perhaps they were curious about this year's incoming freshmen. But you don't have to worry anymore. There are few places in Kimberley safer than by the president's side. Anyway, you did a good job avoiding capture. You aren't the only new students who got lost, after all. Just follow me. Hey, I was so worried about you. My apologies, Katie. <clears throat> the hell is wrong with you? Uh, uh, wait, Oliver? Why did you go after us by yourself? And that's not the worst part, what you said back there. This seems like an appropriate resting place. That's all. It's as simple as that. You knew getting involved in that fight by yourself was suicidal. No, the truth is, you were actually counting on it. Isn't that right? I understand how you feel, but you have to calm down. Let's talk it out. There must be more to this. Now, now, can you tell us the reason? Why did you do that? We're your friends. We'll help you however we can. Truth be told, I think Oliver already said it best. I've lost any and all attachments I've had to this life of mine. Somehow, none of this even feels real to me. So I wonder, am I alive or did I die back then? The battle was one of the worst I'd seen. Our foe, Yoshihisa Soma, led 50,000 men. I was assigned to the rear along with 200 of ours. Surrounded by blood and death, I focused solely on killing. Before long, I found myself in the middle of the enemy camp. I have come to kill General Yoshihisa Soma! Make way or die! How dare you! Know your place! 
There's no candy here on the battlefield. If I may make a request, I'm told that your son, Yasutsuna, is the strongest warrior among your clan. Please allow me the chance to have a duel against him. Uh, you killed him without knowing who he was? Wait, what? Uh... It's true. My son was a skilled fighter, but he was also a poet possessing a kind soul. You wouldn't know. There's no way you could have known that. And now he's dead. Don't worry, little girl. We're not going to torture a warrior who fights to the end. I want nothing from you, not even your name. You will die a forgotten soldier. That will be the only revenge I grant myself. Kill her! I can't move! What's going on? You understand the ways of your country. Would you be so kind as to enlighten me? How exactly is not asking this young warrior her name an act of revenge for your son's death? The sorcerer from the West! Well, regardless of that, I have an affinity for children with potential. It's the educator in me. And it would be such a waste to allow her to die here. You, nameless girl, I have a proposal. Would you like to come to my country and uncover the secrets of magic? Hmm? Ever since that moment, everything I've gotten to experience has felt like a long dream. And that's why I was in such a hurry. Before I wake from this dream, I wanted my wish to come true. Your wish? Enjoy not the sword of vengeance, but the sword of mutual love. To have a fair fight between opponents who respect and accept one another, with no negative feelings. According to the tenets of my martial arts, it's something called Shiawase. Shiawase? What are you talking about? I don't get it. You want to kill someone you respect and admire? Yes, it's messed up, right? Even I know how crazy it sounds. But somehow, when I fought you earlier, Oliver, I could feel it in my heart. It was my Shiawase, what I'd searched for all this time, fight to the death out of nowhere. I knew that, but still, when you pushed me away, all I could feel was despair and pain. It was too much. At some point, I stopped caring about everything. I just wanted to die. I think I'm starting to get what's going on here. Oliver turned you down and you got all weird about it. Huh? Could you stay quiet? You really aren't helping the situation. Huh? Now I think there's some truth to her words. <laughs> Whether I fell in love with you or your blade, there isn't too much of a difference as far as I'm concerned. You hear that, Oliver? Well, would you look at that? That's a warrior's mindset, huh? But Nanel, both of you are our friends. We can't just let you kill each other. Would a sparring match be good enough? I'm afraid that's not possible. The sword arts I've learned have killing techniques at their core. Sorry. You mean you can't take it seriously unless you're trying to kill each other? You're a real piece of work. I understand now. But as your friend, I can't sit back and let you do this. You need to find a new way to live, Nanel, okay? <sighs> what do you mean? I want you to stop looking for places to die. After all, Kimberly has too many of those to count. And one more thing. This isn't some dream you're having. You're alive, you said before. It didn't matter if it was a person or a blade. Well, you should be looking at the person. And sword or no sword, Oliver is right here. <sighs> also? Everybody here is your friend, and all of us want you to be happy and alive so we can spend even more time with you. She's right. There's more fun to be had! I won't let anything bad happen to you, because you and I are friends. It's not easy for someone with my background to make friends here, so don't die on us. Anything else, Oliver? Will you do something for me, Nano? Can you promise you won't try to get yourself killed? And that no matter what, you'll use your sword for your own sake. Yeah! Thank you, everyone. Seems I forgot myself for a moment. Sorry, I won't let it happen again. From now on, I won't try to throw my life away. I swear it! So please, teach me how to live in this place. I could really use the help. 
I already feel lost. If I'm being honest, I don't think I followed a single thing our teachers said in any of our classes today. We'll do whatever we can to support you. Peach has started studying magic too. You're not alone. You'll get the hang of it in no time. Yeah, he's right. Hi. Don't put me down to make her feel better! <laughs> <laughs> the second they crossed blades, they realized they were fated to be together. It's incredible. Their swords are almost too dazzling to look at. There you are! Good morning, Oliver! Good morning. Looks like you're feeling a lot better now. I'm sorry for worrying you all yesterday. Don't let me in with them. I wasn't worried at all. Anyway, it's a good thing you're back to your normal self. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go to class! Is there something I can help you with, Nano? I just wanted to get a good view of you. Shala said instead of watching the sword, I should be looking at the person wielding it. Right, but maybe you could do your looking from a little further away. Does it upset you? Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> he doesn't seem to mind it too much. He's super into it, for sure. Guy, Pete! <laughs> Hold on, Nano. So, um, I don't think it's good for you to stick so close to Oliver. Is something wrong with it? Huh? Uh, yeah. Because... But it looks like someone minds it. You know, I never took her for the jealous type. <laughs> Get back here! Everyone's already so excited. Yep, they're having lots of fun. This is good. By now, hopefully Nanao's realized there are more ways to live than just by the blade. All right, break time. Does anyone have any questions they need cleared up? Um, actually, Mr. Garland? What is it? I've been wondering for a while now, are you able to wield a spellblade, sir? It was only a matter of time before someone asked that. Very well. I might as well explain it to you all. It's a special kind of magic. Unique sword arts commonly called spellblades. The idea is simple. A spellblade is a technique that, when used within the one step, one spell distance, will kill an opponent with no opportunity to resist. There are six known spellblades currently in existence. Many mages dedicate their lives to developing new spellblades, and many try to invent ways to defeat them. And yet, despite their efforts, the number of spellblades has remained unchanged at six. These techniques are secret by nature. How they work and who can wield them is closely guarded. There are even some who doubt they exist. As for me, unfortunately, I can't tell you if I'm able to use a spellblade or not. Apologies. Teacher! Come on, give us a hint! But what happens if two spellblade users battle? Enough. As you can see, whenever the question comes up, class comes to a dead halt. Break time is over. Back to- I'd love to see what these spellblades look like up close. Did you know anything about them, Oliver? Nope. Not any more than what we just heard. Still flapping your mouths instead of practicing. Mm -hmm. What? Think you're above it? Of course not. All of us are beginners here. We still have a lot to learn. All of us, huh? Do you really think we're on the same level? I'm not looking to pick a fight. Is that so? Why don't you break it down for me, then? What exactly do you mean by that? Mr. Andrews, stop acting like a jerk. You're only embarrassing yourself. Stay out of this, Miss McFarlane. I don't have any business with you. Out with it. What do you want from me? Don't play dumb. Or is your athame only for show? All right, then. I'll face you. So is this what you meant by practice? Keep talking big while you can. I'll repay you for your insolence tenfold. Your posture's changed. Do you intend to lose on purpose? I don't want to see you lose like that. If your plan is to allow yourself to be beaten, then why even fight in the first place? If you're going to fight him, give it your all! Wait, calm down. How dare you? Do you truly think so little of me? Am I not worth taking seriously? You two, enough chatter! Uh. You know that guy? We're the same age, so it drew many comparisons. Because of that, he's always feared losing his place, not only in the school, but within his family. I'm sorry. I suspect I might be partially responsible for why he's so fixated on showing off his strength. It wasn't my intent to create bad blood between me and him. I can apologize if it'll help. Don't bother. It's not like you did anything wrong in the first place. Also, I don't want to disappoint Nanao either. Just forget about him. Guess there's no way to make them both happy. There you guys are! What's wrong? Katie's doing something stupid! She heard they were going to kill that troll that got loose at the parade and ran off! There are several things in this world that I simply cannot abide. 
One of which is having to repeat myself to the same person because they weren't listening. If I have to say it three times, I begin to wonder if instead of a human I'm conversing with a monkey. What is your name? I suppose you must have one, yes? It's Katie Alto. Alto? Ah, everything makes sense now. Many of the civil rights crowd are delusional idiots, but your parents are beyond saving. My sympathies. You were born into the wrong family. Or pretend I didn't hear what you just said about my parents. So please, I'm begging you to spare this troll's life! What an irresponsible request. If we let this thing live and it kills somebody, will you take responsibility for it? That won't happen. I'll make sure he doesn't attack anyone. It sounds so easy when you say it. Perhaps you'll have a nice chat over tea. Stop laughing! It seems you still need to be educated. In a way a monkey can understand. Dolor! <laughs> This man, Darius Grenville. This kind of punishment is inhumane! Punishment? I'm simply instructing a student. If you're going to interfere, then... Excuse me. <clears throat> the passion you put into nurturing students is admirable. But there's more to teaching than physical discipline. Milligan, fourth year. What do you want? Sir, an objection has been filed, so a hold has been placed on the troll's death. Unfortunately, you'll have to stop there. That's quite enough, Darius. <gasps> the use of extreme pain spells in teaching was banned over five years ago. <laughs> I have no intention of changing my teaching methods. Tell me, what is this objection? We have yet to complete a full investigation of what could have caused the incident at the parade. As it stands, this troll is evidence. Of course, with the headmistress's blessing. Utterly ridiculous. So you've thrown your lot in with these civil rights advocates? Oh, please. I'm a passive conservative, just as I've always been. That said, these advocates are no longer the small powerless faction they were in years past. If we execute the complain and raise hell over. Fine. Do as you wish, then. You'll see I'm right. Perhaps the monkey will learn after the troll steps on her. They aren't violent creatures! <laughs> Try not to move, Katie. This should help ease your pain a little bit. Are you okay? My name is Vera Milligan. I was concerned about what they were going to do with the troll as well. As a fellow demi-human advocate, I think you and I can do a lot of good together. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. <sighs> okay. I don't get it. How are you still smiling after going through all that stuff? I'm just happy I met Miss Vera. She's simply incredible. Uh, uh, huh? What the... This message came from Mr. Andrews. Uh, it's an official challenge for both of you. Well... Let's try and be friends today. Most of the trolls at Kimberly are pretty used to being around people. But this one's been like this ever since the incident at the welcoming parade. Okay, I'm not gonna hurt you. You're hungry, right? I brought you food. <sighs> hey, it's safe to eat. There's no weird stuff inside it. <laughs> Look at those Are you sure about alone. accepting Mr. Andrew's duel? Something about uh, it feels uh, off. I see. <laughs> um, I understand your concern, but I have no reason to refuse him. Yeah. At this point, we're better off accepting it. No matter how we proceed, he already made up his mind to cause us trouble. Might as well kick his butt, then! So when's that happening again? <sighs> Tomorrow night, the first layer of the labyrinth. Right, of course! I knew that! I just forgot for like a second. <clears throat> hey, did you guys see her today? That Katie Eltel girl went to go visit that stupid troll again. I don't get her at all. How can she stand being around such a dumb brute? Wait, maybe she sees a kid that's here in that beast. <laughs> I don't care if she goes and sees it, but she should wash herself off afterwards. Because of her, the entire classroom reeks of that disgusting troll. <laughs> Come on, don't you think that's a little mean? <laughs> Those bastards don't shut their mouths. I will. Ignore them, guy. Starting a fight will only invite more trouble. <sighs> I couldn't care less what those idiots are saying. But they aren't being subtle about it at all. Oh, I even saw her try to talk to it the other day. Huh? And get this, she was grunting like him. Ooh, ooh, just like that. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> hey, are you gonna let that slide? I barely made it on time. There's our world-class impersonator. You finally did.
decided to grace us with your presence. Go on, why don't you show us your troll impression? I hear it's pretty good. Oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> What's wrong? Don't tell me you forgot how to speak human. Ooh, that's not good, Miss Elto. You see, this classroom is for humans only. Something like you should go back to its cage. <laughs> stay back. Why don't you stay with your beloved troll? <laughs> <laughs> All of you better shut the hell up! Krakor. Everyone's present, huh? We'll escort you to the dueling grounds. Sharpen your athletes now. Acutus. Listen, everyone. If you feel like you're in danger, don't hesitate to fight back. You guys ready to go? special plan for this. We're finally here. Patentibus! Traditional game where kobolds are killed for sport. 
Nowadays, there are many who find it cruel, so it's become somewhat of a rare sight. You've come! I hope I don't have to explain this game's rules to you. What's the point of holding that kobold hunt in the first place? Our entire reason for being here was to accept your challenge for a duel. Oh, please, you want to duel me? There's no honor to be gained by defeating a commoner like you. So you want me to lower myself to your level? It's simply laughable. It'll still be a two-on-one. You two and I will take turns hunting kobolds within this arena. In the end, whoever slays the most will be declared the winner. Decent terms, eh? How ridiculous. It's clear as day he's a veteran at this particular game. On top of that, Nanao's never even seen a kobold until today. Are these conditions not to your liking, Mr. Horn? Wait. It would probably be best to let him beat us. I can use this as a chance to repair my relationship with him. Hey, look! The priest trying to escape through the oh, gate! Come on, you coward! Don't try and turn tail and run! Fight, you stupid mutt! The Lord! <laughs> Now, 
can take that thing on all by herself. Don't do anything rash. If you try to go down there, you'll only get in her way. I know that, but we can't just sit here and do nothing while she fights alone. Even if we can't help her, maybe you can. Tony <gasps> trust. <laughs> that may be true, but I made a promise to Oliver. I have to keep you safe. Uh, now, raise your athames. We can't afford to be careless. Stay focused. The only thing we can do right now is trust our friends. <laughs> <laughs> Without you, Mr. Andrews. Well, you told me you wanted to see how I fought firsthand, didn't you? So that gust of wind was your doing. I've never seen anything like it. You really came through. You don't need to state the obvious. I'm a scion of the Andrews clan, after all. When it comes to wind magic, you won't find anyone better. <laughs> it's over. We made it. <laughs> I had decided. I was ready to risk my life to become a real mage. It's only natural to be afraid of death, but more than that, I'm scared of losing. 
Just the thought of being an embarrassment to the Anders clan fills me with fear. I would rather be dead. How can you fight a strong opponent like that without a moment's hesitation? How do the two of you throw yourselves headlong into battle? Tell me. Well, as a samurai, I've never had the luxury to choose my foe. You see, once a fight has begun, all you can do is believe in your victory. <sighs> this is where Maya and Anao's philosophies differ. When faced with an opponent you can't beat, it makes sense to run. <gasps> and yet, you stood your ground. While most of the students here panicked and fled, you mustered up the courage to turn around and fight. We couldn't do it alone. As long as I live, I'll never forget the honor and bravery you displayed. You've done your family proud. <gasps> May light always shine upon your path. You have nothing to fear. You are a true warrior. Your future is proud as a raised sword, comrade in arms. <gasps> Out. And we only suffered a few minor scratches. Oh my god, that's not minor at all! What do I do? I can't use healing magic yet! Don't worry, I can. Come here, Nanao, hurry! There's no need! I can't thank you enough, Rick. It's been quite a while. I wondered where this side of you had gone. As your protector, I'm embarrassed by my inability to keep you safe. I assume you mean the Colosseum? Don't worry about it. There's no way you could have guessed a Gerudo was lurking nearby. This is Kimberly, after all. While you're on these grounds, you're never truly safe. All the more reason. I need to protect you. That way, when the time finally comes, you'll be in a position to achieve your goal. You're right. I will be. Morning! Did you sleep well? Here's your breakfast. It's extra good today. You see? <laughs> There's no doubt you're passionate about this. You come here every day, despite what people say about you. Unfortunately, you'll need more than passion to save this poor troll from his fate. It's too late. <laughs> He's actually eating it! You see? It's good! <laughs> My goodness. You're simply incredible, Miss Alto. Well, I trust that everybody here can now tell the difference between a garm and a warg's intestines. That's all for today. You're dismissed. Uh, <laughs> Lunchtime. Uh, how does she expect us to eat after all that? Yeah, I know exactly how you feel, dude. Back home, I had to slaughter cattle sometimes. But even still, today's class got to me, man. Uh. <gasps> The good news is those guys have gotten much quieter. That's right. It's a small step, but at least they don't insult Katie directly to her face anymore. But still, something tells me this isn't over yet. What happened last night could be seen as an attack on the conservative faction against demi-human rights. Following that thought... It might be an act of retaliation from demi-human rights activists for the incident at the parade where Katie was almost killed. Is that what you're getting at? I agree. Wait, I didn't have anything to do with that. Don't worry, none of us think you're involved in whatever's going on. But still, someone's orchestrating these events behind the scenes to incite a war. Incite a war? Oh, we're just speculating right now. It's fine. She's right. Though I'd rest easier if we knew who was behind it. I hope they figure it out soon. Yeah, but none of the teachers seem to be too concerned about it. That's because the school won't be getting involved. Uh, wait, why not? It's simple. It's because the incident happened in the labyrinth. To them, this was nothing more than a fight between students. One that got a little out of hand. It'd be a different story if students had been killed. But here at Kimberly, what happened to us doesn't count for all that much. They don't care about us if we live? That's crazy! I know it's too late, but we sure picked a scary school to enroll in, huh? Yes. Although, there's a silver lining. It seems Nanel's gained something from it all. So hey, tell us, how did you kill it? You call your Athame a katana? That's cool! Do you want to come sit with us for lunch? Um, I don't know what to say. To be honest, I'm a little overwhelmed. <laughs> she got super popular overnight, huh? They sure changed their tune fast. Something wrong, Katie? I totally get why she's popular. She fought bravely against the Garuda. But how come everyone's so focused on her when all of her 
Sarah did just as much. It doesn't seem very fair at all. <sighs> Truth be told, I agree with you. The way he fought was simply incredible. I remember that battle so clearly, I could spend a whole hour describing it. Yeah, we already know. You almost talked our ears off last night. Maybe she's still got more to say. If you think about it, Nanao's swordplay was flashy. Meanwhile, all of her spells were dull-looking, and, frankly, it's <laughs> difficult to understand. Hey, hey, calm down there, Pete. Are you trying to mentally break the poor guy? Right. My bad. Well, to be fair, beginners can appreciate it. The way he fights is amazing. Though I agree, Oliver hasn't been properly rewarded for all of his hard work. So I'll fix that. <gasps> uh, <laughs> hold on a sec, what the heck are you doing? I thought you might want a kiss to celebrate your victory. Even as a joke, that's a bit much. I'm sorry I can't do more to reward you. Don't worry, once I think of something else, I'll let you know. Thanks, but that's not the issue here. I'm back. What are you talking about? Did I miss anything? And now, the timing! Shallow's gone crazy! She said she was gonna give him a victory kiss for taking out the Garuda. I see. I didn't realize I was something done here. Very well. Then I wish to participate too. <gasps> uh. Huh? And now! <laughs> Turns out this is more embarrassing than I expected. Alright, Oliver. Isn't it time for you to return the favor? Uh. Isn't this your last night's battle? It's only natural for us to share the spoils of war. Go on! Wait, you're kidding. If you ask me, it'd be rude to refuse her request. If he was against it, he would have said no. Mm -hmm. Hold on! This is crazy, right? Hey, Oliver. Don't leave me waiting, okay? <sighs> Alright then. No? <gasps> Sister! It is you. I knew it. We finally meet at school, huh? Hey. <sighs> um, am I interrupting? Sorry. I was so happy to see you, and... It's fine. There's no way you could ever be a bother to me, you know? Thanks for that. Are these your friends? Wonderful. They seem nice. Anyway, I'll be going, okay? <coughs> Remember, Noel, take care of your friends. Till next time, bye. Who was she? You seem pretty close. Uh, oh, right. That girl's my cousin. Her family's been kind enough to allow me to stay with them. She called you no. Is that some kind of nickname? Hold on. You forgot something. My kiss. Listen up. This will be your first practical exam for this class. Everyone must remain vigilant at all times. These materials can undergo drastic state changes. Or, to put it in terms your minuscule brains can comprehend, if you aren't careful, you will die today. Keep that in mind as you peruse the magic potion recipe you see before you. This is your first and final warning. Your time starts now. This is the fifth class we've had with this teacher. Since you had that argument with him about the troll, I was afraid he'd try to give you a hard time. Yeah, but that hasn't happened. If it were anyone else, I might think he was just a diligent teacher. Yeah, right. Let's hurry and get this over with. Hold on, Guy. Uh, this potion recipe has a lot of hidden pitfalls. I can help you check your work, but you have to be careful. Uh, uh, okay. I can help out too. I'll make sure Nanel gets everything right. Okay. Which leaves you. You don't have to worry about me. I made sure I prepared for this. Pete, are you sure? Don't interfere. You'll only get in my way. Okay, then. All right. All that's left now is to wait. No! Uh, calm down. You just put in way too much bubble grass. She needs to rinse her eyes out with small olive oil. When you add the vampire bloom to the cauldron, it needs to be covered. <sighs> Wait, Pete! You have to dilute it down first! Huh? Inverse them! handled all of those perfectly. Tell me, who are you? Oliver Horn, sir. Horn? I've never heard of that clan. You must be relative newcomers, but you've got a knack for this. It takes an exceeding amount of study to give such accurate instruction. I'll remember your name and face, Mr. Horn. A 
until next we meet. Thank you, sir. Before I go, I'll give you a bit of friendly advice. You should choose your friends more carefully. Nice job. Seems your talents are finally being recognized. Isn't that exciting? Please, it's really not a big deal. I hate to say it, but things would have been bad if you hadn't saved me. Thank you. I'm very sorry my carelessness got you hurt. Don't worry. See? It's already healed up. Mr. Horn. Uh, Mr. Andrews. Did you need something from me? You probably already know this, but in case you don't, be careful around that teacher. You talking about Mr. Grenville? He finds talented students and takes them under his wing. But he ruins their future careers by stealing from them. He passes off their hard work as his own. He's surrounded by all kinds of rumors, none of them good. You'll probably get an invitation from him soon enough. When it comes, I'm sure he'll promise you the world. But you cannot trust his word. I just wanted to give you a warning. Of course, Mr. Andrews. I appreciate the advice. Thanks, Rick. I couldn't just stand by and say nothing. Also, someone's looking for you. An acquaintance of mine. They want to talk to Miss Alto and the rest of you. It's about the incident with the troll on our first day here. I'm really sorry. I was chatting with Mr. Andrews earlier, and he suggested that I should apologize to you. To be honest with you, I never expected all of that would get so out of hand. Ah, I see now. So it was you, then. You're the person who cast that spell on Katie and made her run into the parade? That was dangerous. That's right. What's wrong with you? Katie could have died back there! Well, my parents told me activists are an embarrassment to mages everywhere. You see, that's why I cast the spell on you. It was just a prank. Just a prank? If you have something to say, you should use your words. How could you sneak attack her from behind? Only a coward would do something like that. Uh, but that's why I said I'm sorry. Hold on. You're saying all you did was put that spell on Katie to make her run? Yeah, that's it. So, who else helped you? Tell me. Somebody else must have made that troll go berserk. I don't know. It was just some dumb prank. All I was trying to do was embarrass her a little bit, okay? I had no idea that troll was going to break free. <clears throat> Can we really take her word for it? I didn't get the sense that she was lying to us. If she didn't cast a spell on the troll, then who did? I have a hard time believing it's all a coincidence. <sighs> this is starting to get complicated. Uh, um, anyway, why don't we think about something else for now? I know, I'll see if I can become better friends with the troll. That sounds good. Good luck, Katie. I know you can do it. Okay, see you later! She's resilient, that one. She really is. Hey, what happened to you the other day? Why did you lose control? I know it wasn't your fault. Just because I can tell you're not the kind of being who'd hurt innocent people. Was it magic? Or was it something else? <laughs> Working. There's no rush then now. You've gotten a lot better. Just think of it this way. A spell is a bridge between your thoughts and an external phenomenon. The flames you're trying to make, they have to exist within you first before anything else. Clearly envision them in your mind. When I learned the sword, I was taught to sense the power within me. I was trained to circulate it and bend it to my will. But after the power leaves my body, I feel lost. I don't know what to do with it. Cast away all distinction between you and the outside world. Meld into what exists beyond your body. Hold on to that feeling. And then... Flava! Uh, wow. You know, I wish you and I could have a real conversation. I wonder what you're thinking about right now. <laughs> Don't. Huh? Come here. Stay away. Wait a second. You can talk? You should not come here, sis. That person is evil, so run. That's not good enough. I still have much to learn. Take your time. Honestly, I'd like to master this spell as soon as I possibly can. Wasn't it the first spell you all cast together? It looked like it was a 
lot of fun indeed. Yeah, that was it. Next time, I'd like to be able to join in and help. Although, if I had to guess, that big person you call a troll, he won't try to escape again. But I want to be ready just in case. <laughs> Hold on. What did you say? Hmm? That troll person. I don't think they'll try to escape again, so I... You said it was trying to escape? Is that what you saw during the parade? It wasn't simply going on a rampage, but trying to run away from something? Thinking back to that day, I guess I unconsciously jumped to that conclusion. For some reason, it felt like he was trying to make its way to the school gates. But there's not much difference between that and going berserk. It's an important distinction. If it was trying to run from something, then I guess that means... Uh, oh no. I think you might be right. Hmm? No, no. We'll have to postpone training. <laughs> Katie! Did she already go back to her room? Uh, uh, wait, this is Katie's Athame. It was Wait a second. You can talk? I was afraid this would happen. Do you know where Katie, our friend, was taken? Please, it's important. I don't know. Sorry, maybe. Where I was locked up before. A place very dark and deep. You mean the labyrinth? I don't get what's going on. I promise I'll explain everything to you later. We have to go after Katie. Of course. Lead the way. In the not-too-distant past, rights activists organized a number of different projects to try to grant demi-humans greater intelligence. But why? They thought if all demi-humans could be made as smart as humans, those opposed to giving them rights would see their potential. One of the projects was an attempt to forcefully indoctrinate human language and trolls. The project drew a lot of criticism from other activists and was quickly abandoned. But I believe someone might be trying to carry the torch, hiding in some dark corner within Kimberly. It's all starting to make sense. Someone was experimenting on that troll's brain. That's why it tried to escape. Because it couldn't bear being tortured anymore. They were tampering inside its head while it was still alive? How is that possible? There aren't many mages out there who have the know-how to pull off something like that. Whoever it was, they'd have to be an expert in demi-human biology. Where is she? I was hoping we'd be able to catch up. The culprit behind this can't be far ahead. It's too dangerous to go any deeper. We need backup. So, let's get Godfrey or Whitrow. They'll be able to help us. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, but I can't have you calling Godfrey over here just yet. Getting burned up by the flames of purgatory isn't particularly high on my list of goals. <laughs> you! I thought you might be involved! But why, Milliken? Explain yourself! Welcome to my personal workshop. Mr. Oliver Horn, and Miss Hevia. Imagine my surprise when you slew the Garuda. It was incredibly upsetting. It took an entire year and no small amount of effort to make it my familiar. And the day I unveil it to the world, it gets killed. So you were behind that, too. <sighs> Oliver, look over there! Katie! What have you done? Nothing yet. She's fine. See? My operation on the troll's brain went perfectly. And yet, no matter what I did, he refused to say even a single word. My research was at a standstill for such a long time. I was stuck. But then Katie came along. Her presence alone was enough to awaken his ability to speak our language. I have to know, what is it about her that made it work? Stop it! I'm just going to take a little peek inside. I want to see her brain up close. Don't worry, I specialize in the brainstem. Yes, with but a single glance at it, I can tell exactly where someone's talent comes from. I wonder what wonderful secrets are inside, waiting to be discovered. Don't worry, she won't feel any pain. I won't even leave any scars. I'll be finished before you know it. Trust me, Katie will be in very good hands. I've had lots of practice! I take it to mean you don't intend on giving her back? Of course I do. I'll happily return her to you. Right after I'm done. I've had enough. We're going in circles. There's no point in discussing this any further. I'll get her back! Hold it, no, no! <laughs> uh. 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 That 
was a fast reaction. You're certainly better than any freshman I've seen before. How the hell do you have a basilisk eye? It's a present from my overprotective parents. Though it's not something just anyone can use. In fact, it killed five of my siblings before finally settling within me. A parent's love can be quite the heavy burden indeed. Let me introduce myself once more. I'm Vera Milligan, a fourth year at Kimberly Magic Academy. My major is demi-human biology, of course. As a demi-human rights activist, it's my dream to help them find equality in society. I have another name, maybe you've heard of it. Those who know me have given me the moniker of Snake Eye Milligan. <laughs> Those who know me have given me the moniker of Snake Eye Milligan. Avoid her gaze no matter what! Don't worry about me. Go! Oh, Tony Trix! Tony Trix! Uh, uh, smells too strong. Swordplay, perhaps rumors that you went toe to toe with my Garuda were true. Not only that, but your footwork is excellent. That said, you can stand to be more attentive. Flava! <laughs> your timing is impeccable. Whenever she gets careless, you step in to help. Is that it? She's handling the now sword like it's nothing. This is bad. Lipia! Now, impetus! You gave me a bit of a shock at that. How sneaky of you. Using a barrier spell to hide your attack? Wow, I'm stealing that. You're quite the formidable foe. <laughs> Simply outstanding. It's surprisingly tricky to face you head on. I guess I'll just have to do what a mage does. See? Come dance with me! Tony! <laughs> Gore! I can't take my eyes off of you for even a second. Why won't you face me head on for once? <laughs> Whoopsies, I messed with that spot on the floor earlier. Go flame up! No! no! <laughs> should have turned you into mincemeat. I'm not sure Nanao herself realizes what she did. She felt the spell with her katana, and then deflected it. The only way she could have done that was if her blade was an extension of her body. What other miracles are you capable of? Can you handle this? Burn bright, Fortis! Pass me up here, Nanao! Flama! Flama! This can't be real. I shouldn't be allowed to have this much fun. You guys were supposed to be the appetizer before Alto. All right. Can you handle it? Don't worry. What else are you going to do to keep me entertained? I must say, your plan is quite a thrilling one. If you think that, then there's no way we can lose. Let's go! Right! <laughs> I put a bounce spell on that desk earlier in the fight. <gasps> I'll hold her attention by casting spells non-stop! Flama! Impetus! Tony Trash! Break it! Now, she can't use her enchanted eye to stop me now. This is checkmate! <laughs> her left hand... This is bad! Time that flows around it. If I could do that, 
My plates move faster than light itself! She doesn't even realize what she did. She severed it. In the moment of her strike, she was able to see the time and distance that separated her from her foe as a tangible obstacle, and used her sword to cut through them. It didn't matter how fast the ice curse could close in on her. Before Nanao's katana, speed itself was completely meaningless. No one could have blocked her blade, no matter who they were. An unstoppable skill that gives its target no chance to resist. That attack was a spell blade. But it wasn't like any of the existing six spell blades. She created a seventh spell blade, one never seen before. I think it's best to spare her life. She had no intention of taking ours. She'll be all right. It shouldn't be long before she wakes up. First things first. Let's get Katie out of this place. Wait, before that, Oliver. Huh? You haven't forgotten about the debt you still owe me, have you? Where's my victory cues? Jeez, uh, you're unbelievable. Are you two all right? Uh President Godfrey and Mr. Whitrow, how did you find us? We received a tip that you were in danger. They didn't leave a name, so we rushed here. I see. To be honest, I'm surprised. You're a freshman, but you defeated Milligan. It must have been quite a shock to have an upperclassman turn on you like that. Well, Katie's the one I'm mainly worried about. I know this isn't easy to hear. But that's what happened while you were unconscious. Sorry. At first, I believe Milligan really was trying to help you out of the goodness of her heart. You shared her passion when it came to demi-human rights. That's why she wanted to look out for you and nurture your talents. But then, you accomplished something she never could have expected. You got the troll to finally speak our language, and succeeded where she failed. I can't imagine how much of a shock that must have been to see her efforts realized in that way. What's going to happen to the troll? It's actually quite ironic. As the only troll to be successfully given intelligence, he's a unique specimen. The school won't get rid of him. His safety is all but guaranteed. That's good. Well, I guess everything worked out. Katie... Oliver! Stand up straight! <gasps> <sighs> Alright. You too, Nanao. <laughs> That's my way of saying thanks for saving me. So what if the troll had his brain messed with? And who cares if Milligan almost dissected me? <laughs> it's no big deal, damn it! I'm perfectly fine. Something like this won't get me down. After all, we won, didn't we? Everything worked out. We should be celebrating, not moping around. Don't you think? <clears throat> First up, I'm gonna give Milligan the slap of her life. After that, I'll give her a piece of my mind. And then, I'll decide if I forgive her. Just think! This school is filled with people like her. I have to get used to it. Otherwise, I won't be able to change things here. I want to leave Kimberly in a better place than it was when I got here. I hope I can make this school a little bit kinder by the time I graduate. <sighs> Oliver, are you crying? Wait, hold on. I is it because of what I said? Was it so ridiculous you started tearing up? I'm fine. It's not that at all. I'm just happy to see you're the same as ever, Katie. Yeah, I was able to protect something precious. She's such a kind girl, and I won't let anyone take that away from her. You're a real glutton for punishment, huh? Come on, it hasn't even been a week. Do you really have to pick another fight with all this? It doesn't matter how much I lay low. I'm always gonna stick out to them. So I figured I might as well stand up for myself and let her know I don't care what she thinks of me. <sighs> Mr. Horn, I need you to come see me later. We're recovering a student's research, something I ordinarily leave to others. Although, this student was exceptionally talented. They got too close to the spell and thus perished. 
Consumed by the spell, a common occurrence. Yes. For those of us who pursue magic, it is the most honorable way to die. Those who are consumed by the spell leave new discoveries behind. They will not be forgotten. Their spirit is what propels us along the path toward ultimate knowledge. <laughs> Such a weak beast. They couldn't even fight back, and each of them were stronger than the Garuda. Stating the obvious only makes you seem like an idiot, Mr. Horn. <sighs> I see. So the gate remains open. The monsters that came out all devoured each other. Looks like the ones we just saw were the survivors of that free-for-all. mind, I have a question I've been meaning to ask you. What is it? When I think back to the whole situation, you must have known about the troll. Really? Is that so? Magical biology isn't your field of expertise. Also, it was strange how you were so insistent on executing it. As if you wanted to get rid of the evidence as soon as possible. I found signs that pointed to you as Milligan's supplier for her demi-human experiments. That couldn't have been easy to find. You have quite the talent. I suppose you could say that. Although, what I don't understand is why you would help her with her research. It doesn't make sense. Demi-humans aren't the only ones who could benefit from her findings. It could eliminate stupidity from the human race. Since the dawn of civilization, human society has consisted of 1% geniuses and 99% morons. If I want any hope of changing that, I must first find a way to alter human intelligence itself. I understand now. So you were intending on using the same techniques on humans? Correct. But now thanks to somebody, it'll be far more difficult to replicate the experiment. I'm sure you can imagine the depths of my disappointment. Is that why you called me out here? No, the reason I brought you along was to assist with my work. You pride yourself in being a jack of all trades, a stereotypical mage who accomplishes nothing. I'm sorry if I don't agree with you. Don't misconstrue my words. I wouldn't be talking to you if you were worthless. Your flexibility can be a boon. People like you make valuable assistance. How flattering. I hope you don't mind, but I have one more question for you. Ask away. It was the eighth day of the fourth month of 1525. Do you remember where you were and what exactly you did that night? That certainly is an interesting question. Though you should be careful. When fishing for answers, don't be surprised if you catch something else. How much do you know? Don't try to dodge the question with another question. I will have your answer, Darius Grinville. So you were targeting me from the beginning. I'm surprised that woman has any relatives still alive. <laughs> How terribly vexing. I do have one thing to thank you for. Hmm. You're the same after all these years. Thank you for not changing in the slightest. For staying the same detestable Darius Grinville I've dreamt of killing. Let's begin. We're within one step, one spell distance. Draw your blade, Grinville! I'll make sure your death is a slow and painful one, boy! <laughs> Going off of sword skills alone, I don't stand a chance against him. We <laughs> can cross blades ten thousand times. <laughs> and in almost every instance, the only thing waiting for me is death. <laughs> where I die, but nothing is set in stone. It's impossible to truly predict. But that means there must be a future that exists where I emerge victorious. I can't lose hope. I have to find the thread that doesn't get severed and follow it. When the moment comes, I'll let myself be drawn forward, while the flow of that particular timeline will pull me towards the future I observed, the one where I cut down my enemy. And then it will be up to me to make that future a reality. This will be the one strike in 10,000. The Force Spellblade! Angustavia! The thread that crosses the abyss! Uh, uh, now, turn and drift! It's not like you to just stand there. I thought you would have run away at the first opportunity. What? No way! This is impossible! That Spellblade, it should be lost. How the hell did you know how to use it? There are things you were able to take from her that night, and a number of others that you weren't. That's all you need to know. Hold on! You're that woman's spawn! You couldn't tell? I don't blame you, we don't look alike. But I think that's for the best. 
I'm sure you're aware. Pain spells can only reproduce agony that the caster has personally experienced. But I wouldn't count on that to save you here. You see, I prepared myself. The 128 forms of pain you inflicted on my mother that night. I made sure to experience them myself just for this moment. Listen well, Darius Grinville. Soon you're going to start looking for the right words. And until you say them out loud, I'm going to continue torturing you. I'll make you experience each and every pain you made my mother suffer. So start reaching into that brain of yours. Find the magic words that'll make me stop. Convince me to forgive you for everything you've done. To forgive you for existing at all. Hold we'll on. start with your chest. <laughs> discovered the words yet i'm a teacher how dare you do this to me have you tried to make an enemy of the entire academy wrong it's time for the fingers Lord. <laughs> perhaps the proper words have come to you please wait if there's anything you want i can get wrong. it stop i'm sorry listen what happened wasn't my fault if only your mother had kept quiet wrong. stopped. You okay? No problems here. I'm able to cast it twice. Any more than that and I'd likely be gambling with my life. Then you are forbidden from using it thrice. Might be safer to not use it at all. Remember, it's all over if you die. Let us pave the way for you. <laughs> we finally meet face to face. It's an honor. That voice. You're Miss Karst. I suppose I have you to thank for tipping off President Godfrey. Yes. I will continue to serve you the best I can, my lord. Please use me however you see fit. Right. Gather now, comrades! This is your coronation. Behold your loyal vassals. Command us. Guide us. Until every one of the monsters who betrayed and slew her has received their due. I swear, I'll make them all pay. Vanessa Aldis. Francis Gilchrist. Enrico Forghieri. Demetrio Aristides. Valtia Mwizikamali. And finally... This way. We're almost there, ma'am. You saved my life. I can't believe I managed to make it out of there alive. This safe house. Are you sure the others don't know about it? It could be dangerous. <laughs> Headmistress of Kimberly, Esmeralda. Six remain. I won't let a single one of them escape. They will die. <laughs> Enjoy not the sword of vengeance, but the sword of mutual love. I'm sorry, Nanel. It seems that I'll have to find out for myself whether or not what you said that day is true.
to live longer if he hadn't made it all the way here. Skinny ones taste the worst, all bones and sinew. Back to business. We're here to talk about Darius, isn't that right? That's correct. It's been nearly four months since he disappeared without a single trace. At this point, we should assume he's dead. How peculiar. Darius was many things, but he wasn't the kind of fool who'd get himself killed in the labyrinth. I agree. It's more likely than not that somebody here killed him. Whoever did it, fess up already. <laughs> I mean, any of us could have taken that jerk down. But let's be honest. Other than us or that kid Garland, that's it. Well, maybe McFarlane. My goodness. That's quite the high praise coming from you. Huh? When did you get back? I'd appreciate it if you showed more surprise. It's no small feat staying hidden in a room full of talented mages. Be quiet, Theodore. That's enough. My apologies, Headmistress. You know me, I couldn't help myself from stirring the pot a little bit. Since no one has spoken up, I'll take it to mean you aren't involved in Darius's death. But a word of warning. If you are lying, I will find out and you will have made a dangerous enemy. I dearly hope you are prepared for that. That will be all. I have no further business to discuss here. I'm not saying I think this is what happened. But what if a student was responsible for this whole mess? How utterly laughable. But still, regardless of what the identity of the culprit is, they will suffer. I will make them regret their stupidity. It's hard. My body... Objects. 
Amazing. Bingo! They're fauna from the genus Bezum and subfamily Scopa. They live off magic particles that exist in the atmosphere, as well as any mana they receive from mages. In exchange, they let us fly with them. But keep in mind, every broom prefers a specific kind of rider. If they don't like you, there's no way they'll let you on. So go and find a partner that's right for you. Hmm. I can't decide. They're all so cute. Uh, he'd be perfect. Ow! Oh, Ow! That hurt! hurt. Oh, I just noticed that you brought your own broom, Oliver. That's nice. Yeah, we've been partners for a while now. Uh, uh. The brooms seem to really like her, huh? I can imagine why. With her, Mana. Uh. Careful with that one! It's got a history of bucking its riders. If you try riding that thing, you could get hurt! I recognize that broom. I see how it is. My steed Akikaze was much the same. You've got so much pride. Only a true master is allowed on. I'm not going to force you to come with me if you don't want to. But out of all the brooms I've seen, I must say I like you the best! I accept your choice! Let us travel together! Excellent! You and I will make marvelous partners! I can't count how many times I've tried to tame that thing. She's incredible. Yes, she's a natural. Normally, even a veteran needs a bit of time to adjust. I'm sure of it. That's the same broom my mother used in the past. And it chose not how to be its new partner. <laughs> No idea broom riding would be so much fun! I can't wait for her next lesson! Same for me. I couldn't fly around like Nanao, but I got to know my broom better. You guys were a lot luckier than the two of us. Maybe we should ask Nanao and Katie to show us the ropes. Speak for yourself. I'll study on my own. I hear you loud and clear. Our son's going through a rebellious phase. I'm worried. Should be fine. That's just how puberty is. You're not my parents, so stop acting like it! Ugh! I'm heading off to class early! We have alchemy up next, right? Mr. Grenville's been missing for a couple of months. While I don't mind the substitute teachers, I hope he's okay. The most plausible theory I've heard is that he ran into trouble while exploring the labyrinth. Though, even that's hard to believe. Some say it was infighting between teachers, or a rogue mage with a grudge against Kimberly Academy trying to get revenge. Who knows what the actual uh, truth could be? Uh, uh, father! Hello. It's been a while, Shella. Somehow, you've gotten even prettier since I last saw you. Uh, hold on, is that Professor Theodore McFarlane? Uh, stop acting like that! <gasps> and where exactly have you been this entire time? Well, a lot of places, actually. Sorry, I only just got back recently. There's someone else here you should be apologizing to first. Oh, not now. It seems you're adjusting to school life. Are you enjoying it? It's wonderful. Thanks for asking. You brought her all the way here from Asia and then leave her to figure things out alone? Well, I thought with you around, everything would turn out okay. What kind of father drops all of that on his daughter? It seems you've made quite a few friends, too. I'd love to get to know each and every one of you. But I've got to go teach a class today. We'll talk another time. A class? Oh, no. To summarize, I will be your replacement alchemy professor for the foreseeable future. I'm simply subbing in, but I hope we can all get along. Father teaching a normal class? I can't see this lasting long. So before we get down to business, I'd like to ask everybody here if you've gotten a chance to read my Journey to the East book series? I have. I've actually read up to volume 12. Oh, is that you, Stacy? It's wonderful to see you again after all this time. Oh, yes, Uncle. Excuse me? I've read it too. Also, I have a question. There's a part here in the second edition of volume 25 that's different from the first printing. Hmm? You read up to volume 25? Yes, three times over! Oh. How wonderful! It's thanks to fans like you that I can put food on the table. May I ask your name? Pete Reston, sir. All right then, Pete. That's great. I'll be sure to bring you back a souvenir for my next trip. <sighs> thanks so much. Uh -oh. What's wrong? Are you okay? Uh, yes. Sorry about that. Welcome to your 
very first magical engineering class. I will be your instructor, Enrico Forghieri. <laughs> wow, I get the feeling he's the worst of the bunch. Guy, you can't say that about someone you've just met. Guy's instincts are spot on. We can't lose focus for a single moment. In this class, I'll be teaching you about the foundations of magical civilization. In other words, you will learn all the theory and skills you'll need to create magic tools and architecture. It's a fascinating subject of study, and I promise that you'll soon fall in love with it just as I have. Let's begin! For today's class, we'll start by dismantling finished products in order to understand what exactly makes them function. Now, these four boxes are magical traps that are set to trigger after 60 minutes have passed. They each have a different internal structure. A word of warning, if you can't take them apart in time, you have a big problem on your hands. If your hands are still attached, that is. <gasps> if you don't want to lose a limb or two, you'd better do your best. I'd suggest you all split up into different groups. Anyway, good luck! Something tells me the losing limbs part wasn't an exaggeration. Careful, we can't mess this up. Listen up, alright? Let's work together. Sounds rude, but hello, too. <laughs> yeah. That explains it. You're experiencing an extremely rare phenomenon, even in the world of magic. A reversi. You have the ability to change your sex. <gasps> You've probably been experiencing the early signs of it. For example, you might have been feeling a sense of dysphoria that you aren't comfortable in your own body. Congratulations, Pete. When it comes to using magic, being a reversi is truly a gift. Huh? A gift? It'll be easier to let you see for yourself. Let's see. How about you try casting a lightning spell? You've had trouble with that, right? Tony Dress! What's going on? It's so strong. I don't get it. Each of the sides of you is unique. They have different elements that they excel at. Do you understand? There's nothing wrong with you. This is a good thing. Trust me. Let's come up with ways to make the best of this. All right? Who's there? Sorry for interrupting you two. Mr. Whitrow? It's been a while. Forgive me. I didn't mean to eavesdrop on your conversation. Right. I didn't sense you there. You could have just stayed hidden if you wanted to. To tell you the truth, I was thinking it was about time. I felt it when I first laid eyes on you in the labyrinth. And then today... I saw you, and my suspicions were confirmed. Mr. Horn has done an excellent job of explaining most of what I intended to tell you. But you still have many questions, don't you? Here's an invitation. We're having a gathering at 8 tonight. <gasps> <laughs> 
Sorry for making you come with me. It's fine. Even if it's the first layer, it's safer to have backup in the labyrinth. <laughs> President Godfrey. Hey, I heard that the three of us are headed to the same party tonight. As the student body president, I do regular check-ins on events that are held inside the labyrinth. I didn't know that. The incident at the Coliseum, then what Milligan was up to. If only I had been more diligent in my duties, I could have stopped them from happening. It's my fault. Please forgive me. Why? None of it was your doing. Mr. Reston? <gasps> I'm told you come from a non-magical family. How are you finding life here? <sighs> Fine, I guess. Be honest with me. It's dangerous and scary, right? Yes. I thought the same thing at first. This place hasn't changed much. I've done everything within my power to make this place safer. But I can't say how much of a difference it's actually made. He really is a good person. Godfrey. We're here. This is a gathering for students who have sex-based magical traits. It's not just reversing. There are people with all kinds of unique traits. I'm sure you'll be welcome here, Mr. Reston. Um, thank you very much. Why, hello! A new friend! Yahoo! Cut it out! Ah. You'll scare him if you act like that. You're the new kid, right? Yes. Hi, this is Pete Reston, a first year, and a brand new reversi. As for me, I'm Oliver Horn. A pleasure. <laughs> Are you always so serious, dude? You can relax here, Mr. Horn. Everyone's a friend. I get it. You're trying your best to protect Pete, right? Yeah, you're a good kid. <laughs> no, you see. And that goes double for you, Mr. Reston. This is perfect. There's one hell of a show coming up. Show? <laughs> it's starting. Brother. Bravo! Thank you. I appreciate you coming tonight. You've got a lot to deal with, and it can make things difficult. I know it certainly does for me. But don't worry, okay? We're here to help each other, so feel free to open up about everything. And if you're feeling shy, I can come over to talk to you directly. <laughs> but first, sit back, relax, and enjoy our show.
Look at this sorry bunch of losers acting all buddy-buddy. It pisses me the hell off. like a bunch of sore thumbs. And you are? My name's Tulio Rossi. First year. I know your names already. Actually, I know a lot about you. Oliver. You too, Nanao. You know, you got too much talent. Is that everything you have to say about her? There's a lot more to her than talent, you know. I know that, Michelle Da. Seriously? Do you think I'm blind or stupid or something? Oh yeah. Four eyes over <laughs> there. We'll be crossing paths again soon. Really soon. See ya. One point. That's enough. Good job at gauging your distance. Next up, Reston V. Rossi. Okay. Good luck. perspective. Right. Swing and a miss, princess. What'd you say? I'm not wrong. Just take a look around you. See all the strong friends you hide behind? I mean, if you keep hiding, do you really think you can get stronger? <gasps> Please help me train! <sighs> I've practiced on my own as best as I can, but I'm still falling behind. And starting next class, Professor Garland will be adding magic into the fights, too. Sure, of course we'll help you. Absolutely. I promise that with our guidance, you'll soon become a master of the Rosette style of swordsmanship. Uh, hold on a second. He should stick to Lanoff style. But he's already struggling. Why don't we see how he does with another style instead? It's way too early to settle for an easy fix. And sticking to the Lanoff style's the smarter move? I can't believe you actually think that. A beginner needs to master all the basics first. Huh? Studying an offensive style like Rosette... Well, well, there they go again. Uh-huh. I knew they'd get into it. You hear that, Nanao? You're listening to one of the greatest debates in the magic world. Which of the three combat styles is the strongest? Huh, well, in that case... If you guys can't decide, I can just teach Pete. Absolutely not! Couldn't both of you work together to teach him? Shella could teach offense, and Oliver could teach defense. Would that work for you guys? <clears throat> if we discuss our lesson plans in advance, I guess I'd be willing to agree. Yeah, I guess I would agree to it too. All right, we'll teach you together. You'll learn to win without relying on one specific style. What's your first instinct at this range? Use a sword attack. Okay. What about at this range? Obviously a spell! And what about here? Uh, uh... Try an attack. Start there and come at me the way you would if this were a real match. <laughs> here I go! Ah! Are you starting to see now? One way to win a match is to be better at sword arts than your opponent. Another way is to be better at spells. However, when the distance was hard to judge, you guessed wrong. Do you see? There's a third way you can win. By being better at judging your distance. In a fight, misjudging distance creates a fatal opening. You just have to take advantage of that. And it will open a path to victory for you. I see. You 
can affect the distance by pulling your arm back slightly. So, if you I actually cast want to get stronger, Four Eyes? Oh. Then how about you let me teach you instead? You see, I know a much faster way than all that junk Oliver's been showing you. Uh, I don't appreciate you barging into our conversation with this weird recruiting attempt. Oh, there's no need to be like that. You guys get all the attention around here while the rest of us are left out, you know? I want to be included. It's more fun that way. Don't you all agree? The strongest among you, anyway! So what are you saying? Enough already. Oh, not much. It's nothing important. It's just... I think it's about time we find out who the strongest first year really is. Of course, our current frontrunner is the now. However, shouldn't the rest of us have the right to try for the title, too? Don't you agree? Let's see who's the strongest first year! Who else wants to try? Stand up if you're brave enough! Come on, join the party! I'll join in! Why not? Uh, Stacy wants to try? Are you really sure? During the Garuda attack, you were so scared you started shaking. Hey! Obviously, I was waiting for an opening to strike! <sighs> I'll try to. I don't trust her to do something like this all by herself. Yeah, definitely. Anyone who wants to try is welcome. Wow, it's great seeing everyone looking so bald. If it's okay, I'd like to join in too. Now we're cooking with gas. Ah, Oliver, you're gonna join or sit this one out? I don't have any reason to refuse. I'll join in. Will that make you happy, Mr. Rosie? In that case, there's no reason for me not to try too. Wait, really? You're gonna try too? Hey, that's all right with me. It's the more the merrier, in my opinion. Okay, let's talk logistics. Here are the names of the participating first years. To win, you have to be the one to get the most medals. If you lose in the fight, you give one medal to the winner, but give all your medals away and you're out. Then, one week from today, the four players with the most medals will face off in the finals. Any of the other players can be challenged anywhere. This isn't some fancy duel with all sorts of rules and regulations. That being said, let the games begin! <laughs> Could I be the first one to have the honor of a fight, Miss Hebia? Uh. Whoa! There's already a challenge, huh? Yeah, I guess so. It's Speed Talker Evelyn. Her aim could use work, but she's quick. Hey, if you insist on giving me a nickname, I really prefer Hurricane Evelyn or Cold-Blooded Evelyn, you know? It would be a much greater honor to lose to me than to defeat any number of nameless brats in this competition. You see, I'm your only worthy opponent here, Asian Samurai. Uh, I'm sorry, but would you mind repeating all that again for me? Now, secure it! <laughs> She knows nothing about magic, so I can just keep my distance. <laughs> oh, I really am cold-blooded, aren't I? Well, Nanao win. Magic's not her strong suit. Her opponent will try to keep a distance between them. So Nanao can't use her blade, right? It's not gonna work. She's too good a fighter. <laughs> Begin! Impotent! Actually, kind of scary. Her skills are on a whole other level. It's crazy. Guys, did you see? I won! Well then, that settles it. I'm promising you now that I'll make it to the finals. Promise you will too. You have to, okay? That way we can all battle each other in the end. We'll get to the finals together! Sounds good. Now I can finally join you two, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I can't even remember the last time I was this excited. Thanks a lot. You're a great teacher. You're welcome. You're a fast learner. You're getting the hang of it really quickly. Awesome job. Are you okay? Yeah. Guess I'm just feeling pretty tired. I'm gonna go. See you later. Uh... Hi, Miss Karst. Can I help you with something? Actually, you've been invited to go have tea. Oh, it's you. Mm. Uh. 
Miss <laughs> Salvadori. Please at least use my first name. There's no need for that. I'm not in the mood. Relax. Come over here. You can resist my perfume, right? Why don't you take a seat for a bit? I want to talk to someone. Miss Sal... Uh, sorry, Miss Ophelia. Have you been in the labyrinth this whole time? No, I've been back to the school building. I wanted to try the cafeteria pumpkin pie. Are you a fan of pie? If I'm being honest, I actually like the tarts better. Huh. They're all so pretty tasty. You and your friends seem to be standing out quite a bit, huh? What was it like to face a Garuda? Put it this way, one time was enough for me. <laughs> Where have I heard that before? Oh yes, Godfrey said it too. That makes sense. I'm willing to bet you're his favorite. Really? Why would you think that? Well, because you're so alike. Especially your habit of going on adventures a first year is far too immature for. Back when we were first years like you, Carlos and I would tag along on his adventures too. You know Carlos, right? That try-hard. I don't agree with you. I think the prefix a caring person. It's actually only a hobby. If you're not careful, he'll meddle in everything you do to an obnoxious degree. Huh. Uh... Well, I'm feeling a little better now. Thanks for the chat. I appreciate you keeping me company. <clears throat> that said, uh... slow down on the adventures for a while. Be a good student and study in the school building. Especially during the upcoming few months, okay? No! Oh. <laughs> oh, hi, big sis. How are you, little brother? Your walk here was fine, I hope? Still not used to it. Hey, Gwyn. Seeing old friends at the concert. Nice surprise, huh? I wouldn't call Carlos a friend, but the two of us have a long history. Anyhow, please treat this place just like your own home. Train here, relax, whatever. Thanks, I appreciate it. Oh, and by the way, I just ran into Ophelia. <gasps> Wait, you saw Leah? But where? The labyrinth, but she's already long gone. Shannon, don't. <sighs> it's too late already. You wouldn't catch her. <sighs> you know, that Salvadori. She's a dangerous one, but she and Shannon actually go way back. You were friends with her? Uh-huh. She's kind of a lonely person. <sighs> anyway, the thing I wanted to talk to you about... It's Nanao, right? Yes, that's right. Nanao, you said that she used a spell blade. Are you sure? Well, not totally. However, I have this really strong sense that she did, even though I'm an imperfect spell blade user myself. I feel that she's like me. And she has a charisma that attracts people to her. Huh. You know, it kind of reminds me of someone. In that broom. Mom's old broom. It accepted her. Right. So I've heard. There's something really special about her. It's like, sometimes I find myself staring at her. I wanna be there for her. <laughs> Seeing you like this, you must really like her, do you? Well, I... Listen, Noel. The strong feeling of being drawn to someone or something is of great importance to a mage. If I'm right about her, that girl would be someone that changes the very essence of who you are. All of those feelings that you can't express, leave them within your heart. Be true to yourself, and be a loyal friend to her in your own way. Yeah, you're right. I'll do that. I'm really glad we talked. Mr. Rossi, that's enough. It's time to come on out. Oh, man. How'd you see me? Ugh, that's so embarrassing, huh? Seriously, I'm wondering what exactly I did to make you hate me so much. I don't hate you. You didn't do anything. So why do you keep following me, then? I just don't like the fact that you're getting more attention than I am. Is that not enough? Whatever, if you say so. But I don't see how I'm getting more attention than the now. You aren't, but can't you see she's too cute to count? I just couldn't be angry with her. Well, I don't think either of us likes small talk. By the end of the fight, we'll know who's better. That's what's nice about a fight, right? Here are the rules. No man.
magic besides anti-lethality spells at half strength. Agreed? It's no fun cutting a fella and not seeing blood. Sounds fine to me. I agree. <laughs> Happy to hear you're up for it. All right. Now, secure us! Well, then. Let's get started. Oh, also, I forgot. I have something for you. Here it is! What do you think? <laughs> Great blocking, Lano style. Beautiful! But I'd rather fight dirty than use a fancy style. None of those techniques works for me anyway. I always thought there had to be a better way to learn to fight than that. Don't you agree? Uh, you know moves like this! Or moves like these! Do forgive me for fighting dirty! I couldn't care less! My training is better than that! I'm not bothered by your cheap tricks! You sure do piece me off! You know what? I'm thankful. You're helping me see my weaknesses. By being embarrassed by someone as weak as you. Keep on running your mouth. Cause there's more where that came from! Except there isn't. See, eight moves from now, you're gonna lose this fight. No one's made me this angry in a while! Take that! It's true that the three basic styles have very few striking moves. I hate to say it, but you're right about that. Which is why, at extreme close range, we're taught to grab the undefended arm rather than strike. You may have a dirty move or two, but your tricks are no match for a tried and true style. I don't need a lecture. Why don't you shut up? Just like I told you. Eight exactly. You know... You sure do piss me off. Here, your medal. Ah, that was a shitty start, huh? First I lose against the person I most wanted to beat, then I get a lecture from it. Oh, well, I'm sorry if I was being too preachy for you. Ah, oh, that's enough. Just get out of my sight. Mr. Rossi. Huh? You have a unique fighting style, but someday soon, you're going to reach limits. Listen, there's still time to learn. Just study a basic style. Begin with all the fundamentals. Why the hell do you care, huh? Because it's a waste. Plus, I'm jealous of people like you. People with one specific talent. Huh? If you couldn't tell, none of the skills that I used in the fight were my own natural talent. They were given to me by someone. They're not really mine. But I wish they were. So, I just think that it's important to nurture your natural abilities, okay? That's all I meant. Don't think I care, but I'm surprised that a goody two-shoes like you can even have problems. I don't know who gave those skills to you, but from execution alone, I'm willing to bet you had to practice a lot. I think you're out of your mind. My lord, that was splendid. You proved your superiority to your opponent. I truly am in awe of your abilities. Miss Karst, you were there. That victory was nothing to celebrate. It makes me sick to think how inexperienced I am. Well, the you that I saw that evening would have destroyed him. Uh. I admire the ruthless side of you. It reminds me of a blade, one hidden in the sheath of kindness. But if killing me can aid you in achieving that blade, then you should do it. It would be the greatest honor to be your whetstone. My lord. You should see your cheeks. You're blushing. <gasps> yeah, you don't normally talk like that, do you? You got a little carried away. No, you've got the wrong idea! Uh, I'm sorry! I'm not gonna use you and toss you away like garbage. Not as my whetstone or subordinate. Teresa, don't forget that. <laughs> That sucked. I let him get the best of me in more ways than one. Oh, you lost. That you? Of all the people. But you still have one medal remaining to give me, don't you? Listen, you! I ain't some prize exchange! No exchange necessary, because I have nothing to give you. 
you'll lose it all without getting anything in return. <laughs> Think you can take me? Let's see. some of my mana inside you to adjust the mana flow in your body. It should help with your current symptoms. Thanks for this. I feel better. Your body still hasn't gotten used to handling magic while you're in your female form. You need to learn how to direct the flow of your mana. Like this. <clears throat> I know it's hard, but you have to relax. You'll get the hang of it soon. How can you be sure? Is this common? Uh-huh. Disrupted mana flow affects a lot more people than you'd think. Puberty or illness can cause it. Also... Uh, it doesn't hurt anymore. Thank you for helping me. No. So, um, are we done yet? Oh, sorry. How do you feel? Like it never hurt in the first place. That's good to hear. Although, this will keep happening until your body acclimates to the change. Don't forget, I'm right next to you. Don't hesitate to call if you need help. Uh, hey! You can't just pat someone on the head like that! Uh, sorry, I couldn't help it. Anyway, we should go to bed. We'll have to get up soon. Pete, this is something we can't keep from the others for too much longer. A reversi? Wow, that's incredible! You've been blessed with a rare and special gift. Uh, congratulations, Pete. I'm not sure if congratulations is the right word. In all honesty, I don't know how to use it. I bet it's a lot to process. Here, let me show you how your new ability works. Uh, where are you touching it's me? nothing to be embarrassed about. With your female form, you have something you previously didn't have as a boy. Huh? Yes, a womb. Did you know people sometimes call a witch's womb her second heart? It's one of the best places to store your mana. What do you mean, store my mana? If you ever run out of mana, it'll open up on its own and supply you with mana that you've put into it. You can even learn how to control it yourself. Let me show you how to open it. <gasps> Whoa! What is this power? Amazing. That's the mana you've stored up being released. Your mana input has gone way up. All your spells should be stronger, too. There, now it's been closed again. What do you think? The female form has lots of advantages. Who knew such a thing was possible? I was raised as a warrior, but I am a woman. Does that mean I can unlock more mana as well? Hey, stop pulling your skirt up! Oh, by the way, you probably need new clothes, right? I've always thought you'd look really pretty in lace. This is the perfect chance. Let's all try on some outfits! You take me! I was wondering who was so loud. Of course, it's you lot. <sighs> Not this guy. No need to be so tense. I'm just here to vent a little bit. Vent? Ever since our fight, I've been on a losing streak. Now see how ridiculously outmatched I am. Alas, I admit defeat. So you fought someone else after you dueled me? You should be careful, Oliver. Some of those fellas are real bad news. You get any stronger yet, glasses? I'm so looking forward to class this afternoon. See you then. <sighs> Good! Next! Ready, sir! I've been wanting to get some payback for humiliating me the other day. Huh? Hold on, do you know what she's talking about? Why would she be so mad at Pete of all people? Even if one of you scores a point, I want you to keep fighting until time is up. Now, begin! <laughs> Stay calm, Pete! Just focus on scoring a hit on her first! You make it sound like I'm some pushover. Hey, Ordinary, why don't you try me? Stand back up. You won't get out of this that easily. Is this really the best you've got? Don't fall into her tempo. Remember, you can use spells in this match. Oh, get real. Do you think you can beat me at magic? Oh! 
I see. Hey, are you sure we're going the right way? I don't want to spend my night getting lost in this place. It's fine. Don't worry about it. While we're together, nothing can scare us. I don't want to be a downer here. But to be honest, there's all sorts of scary things in the labyrinth. We could get attacked by magical beasts, get caught in a trap, or even run into violent students. No thanks. Some upperclassmen are nasty enough outside the labyrinth. Anyway, if we do somehow get lost... <laughs> oh my... <laughs> Hold it! Interesting. Sure are a lot of magical fun on this route. Oh, uh, are there? I hadn't noticed. Aw, oh, dang it, Katie, I should have known. You picked this route on purpose, didn't you? Hang on. I think there's a little bit of danger up ahead. Like, what kind of danger, specifically? <laughs> like that kind. That's more than a little! This place is full of bow shells. Don't worry, their spines aren't big enough to kill you or anything. But still, that doesn't mean they won't hurt a whole lot. How do you propose we get through here? I have a plan. We go right to sleep when exposed to a certain special incense. Flame up. Impetus. Okay, now we have to wait and see. Well, at least she came prepared, guys. Uh, something's approaching from the rear. Oh, no. It's a trap! The incense has it! No time for that! Run now! <laughs> My... my butt! They got my beautiful butt! Oh! Oh, oh it hurt! You guys injured by the side. That was a valuable learning experience. How are we right now? Can you smell something, Casey? Not so fast. My pierced root was just as bad. I did smell something. Here, it still hurts. Huh? Uh. Look, first years. Hello. What's this? <laughs> the Labyrinth Gourmet Club. This is our new member, Welcome Barbecue. Any of you kids want to join in the feast? Look, guys, I found this really big leech. Do you think we could eat this thing? A brave soul in our ranks. Why not? Throw it on the fire and see what happens. Uh-oh, my vision's getting blurry. Do you think it was that funny mushroom? No doubt. Hurry up and take this antidote. Unless you want to start vomiting up blood and die before your time. Yeah, I think we'll pass. Will you guys enjoy your barbecue? <laughs> Goodness, who were those weirdos anyway? A few of them are pretty famous. <laughs> Yeah, the one who invited us to join them is especially famous. They call him the survivor. That was the Kevin Walker? What? Seriously? We should have talked with him more! Really? Is he that big of a deal? Oh, definitely. He went missing for six months in the depths of the labyrinth. And then he came back alive after they'd already held a memorial for him and everything. Six months down here? Impossible. Man, I wish I'd known all that. Makes me reconsider the barbecue invite. That is not what I envisioned when I heard about barbecues. You've never barbecued? Let's go right now. Right now? But with what? Oh, well, I'll be! Welcome, travelers! First years, huh? You better not get used to staying out this late now. But hey, first years or not, I'll take all the customers I can get. <laughs> now then, kiddos, what can I do you for? Looking for a little something to fill your belly? Or having a big old party? Somewhere between full belly and big party. Nothing too experimental. Mm -hmm. Here you go. And since you're first time shoppers, how about a discount? Just 3,000 belt between the six of you. <gasps> for all this stuff? Sure. I respect me some reckless fools who live on the edge. I want you to survive to buy another day. But even if you don't live through it, you'll just end up on my shelves. So it's a win-win. <gasps> <laughs> Your faces! I'm joking! Here, I'll throw in some drinks on the house! Are we there yet? I'm tired and my butt hurts. Just a little bit further, I think. Once we get down this hill. Uh, right here? I think this is it! Uh, yep. Is that a sardine head? No, a herring head. In which case, cut the select! Of course we do! And for a 
workshop on the first floor of this labyrinth. It's one of the better ones, apparently. It's all prepped and ready to be a workshop right away. I have to admit, this was worth a little butt-stabbing. How should we lay it out? Oh, there'll be plenty of time for that. First, we should all share our plans. Oliver? Well, for now, I think I'll keep using this as my home base while I continue to search the labyrinth. I want to make sure it's a suitable safe house, too. Oh, sounds like a real secret base, and a base needs to have good defenses. Let's put traps all around it! Yeah, how about the kind that stab people's butts? More assholes? <laughs> We've already got you! <laughs> that was so much food. It was all fantastic. Guy's barbecue and Katie stews. Not the fanciest cooking, but not bad. Feels like we're camping. Uh, Shella, did you not like it? What's wrong? Oh, it isn't that. Sorry. It was all just so good. And I'm having so much fun. I've never felt this. It's all so strange. So I... Huh? I want to make a bit of a proposal. Why don't we give this a name? A name? Give what a name? Our little group of six here. Our time together's been so special. I think we should give it all a real name. This moment, and this space, but especially this group of ours. I want to name it so that maybe it will last. Is that weird? No, of course not. Not at all. It's a little highfalutin, but there's no harm in that. An official name for a group? I've never even considered that. Hey, Pete, you got any ideas? Huh? Jeez, put me on the spot, why don't you? Join me over here, comrades. Please, let us draw our blades together. Huh? Form a circle, and hold your swords out straight, fellow warriors, so that their points overlap. In my homeland, we have a name for this. It is referred to as a sword rose, and it symbolizes the sacred bond between warriors. Wow. Asia, cool. So now, do we swear to be friends forever or what? Nay, we swear no vow. Huh? Rather, we hold this shape in our minds and never forget the rose that bloomed here. A warrior doesn't have the luxury to speak of the future. So instead, they must try to burn the present moment into their minds. No matter what the future may hold, the rose we planted here tonight shall never be torn asunder. We will protect and hold it dear. <laughs> And that's why, henceforth, we shall hereby be known as the Sword of Roses. The Sword of Roses. Nice. It's a little violent, sure, but it's a good name. Right, guys? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All flowers bloom, living in the moment without fearing death. May we be so fearless. The moments we six share, however brief, will be brighter than any eternity. Hey, Pete, your face is bright red. So is yours. I'm sorry. I guess my feelings just kind of ran away with me. No, don't be. Getting swept up is part of it. Part of what makes this moment unforgettable. Shella, is it special enough? Our name? Are you kidding me? From now on, we six shall be known as the Sword Roses. This image, I will burn it into my mind. And its colors will blaze forever.